Welcome back. I'm Dr. Joseph Akins, Professor of Recording Industry at Middle Tennessee State University. This is the second video in a series covering the fundamentals of synthesizer programming. If you are just joining us, be sure to check out the first video. In this video, I'm going to give an introduction to source generators. As we discussed in the first video, a source is the beginning of an audio path. You'll find two common sources on a synthesizer, an oscillator or a noise generator. Some synthesizers have an external input as well. So what's important for you to learn are all the controls, the knobs, the sliders, the switches found at an oscillator and a noise generator. Let's take a look at those. You should find many controls at the oscillator Controls such as fine tune, coarse tune, octave switch, and waveform selector. The latter allows you to adjust the harmonic content of an oscillator. The other three allow you to adjust the pitch of the oscillator. The fine tune allows you to change the pitch by very small intervals, such as synth, where a coarse tune allows you to adjust the pitch by larger intervals, such as half step. And then, of course, an octave switch allows you to change the pitch by octave. Let's take a look at how these controls are implemented on the Moog synthesizer. Notice that we have three oscillators. Notice on the first oscillator, we have one knob to adjust pitch and one to select a waveform. On the second and third oscillators, we have two knobs to control pitch and then one knob to select the waveform. Now let's take a look at the second oscillator. The knob titled frequency is somewhat a combination of fine tune and coarse tune. Notice that if I move the knob, we will smoothly change pitch up and then back down up to about a perfect fifth high. Then notice below that, the octave switch will allow us to quickly change by octave. We can do the same for oscillator three. For oscillator one, we can only change the octave. Now, the waveform selector is gonna allow us to choose different waveforms. Therefore, change the harmonic content of this oscillator. If I move this waveform selector all the way to the left, I choose what's known as a triangle wave. It has odd harmonics only, almost flute-like. If I choose a different waveform, such as a sawtooth wave, we'll have all harmonics and a much brighter, buzzier tone. I have other waveforms to select. I have a square wave. Square wave is odd harmonics, just like the triangle wave. However, it will sound a little brighter. And then our last waveform is a pulse wave. The reason these waveforms sound different is because of their harmonic content. Another option for the source of your patch is a noise generator. A noise generator generates a random signal that includes all frequencies. It's very simple. You will not have pitch controls or a waveform selector. However, you may have a color control that allows you to choose white or pink noise. Let's take a look and listen to an example on the Moog Voyager. I'm going to switch off the second oscillator and bring on the noise generator. That might not sound too exciting, but once we combine the noise generator with filter controls, the envelope generator, other modules, it does get more interesting. For example,
that's the cutoff frequency, and we will be discussing that in the next video. Your synthesizer should allow you to combine your sources with a mixer. Looking at this diagram, you will see we have two oscillators combined through a mixer, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. With each oscillator, you could have a different pitch, you could have a different waveform. In fact, it could be a noise generator. This will allow you to get more complex patches than with just one single source. Over here, we have a column that's called the mixer. Notice that we have a level and a switch for each source. The first one is for external input. The next is for oscillator 1, oscillator 2, oscillator 3, and then the noise generator. Most any synthesizer will have something like this. As an example, let's switch on oscillator 1 and 2 and switch the noise generator off. I have the level of both oscillators to 10. Back over here at the oscillators, what I'm going to do is set both oscillators to the same octave. I'm going to set them both to a sawtooth wave, and then I'm going to adjust this frequency knob, change the pitch of the second oscillator so it's a perfect fifth higher. Notice this. Now, with this setting, as I play a melody, we will have parallel fifths. If I bring the pitch of the second oscillator back down, so that's perfectly in tune with the first oscillator, we will now have unison. How about octaves? I'll go to the second oscillator and bring it up two octaves. So now, as I play, our two oscillators will be two octaves apart. We could bring in a third oscillator. I'm going to adjust the pitch of the third oscillator. And I'm going to set it up even one octave higher. You could also select different waveforms for each oscillator, therefore getting a more complex waveform with the combination of all three. There are other ways to combine sources, such as frequency modulation. To learn more about those techniques, be sure to check out the book, The Fundamentals of Synthesizer Programming, at themidiprofessor.com. There, you'll find the books that we use to teach electronic music at Middle Tennessee State University. In the next video, we're going to start learning about modifiers, such as the filter. So thanks for watching the Fundamentals of Synthesizer Programming video series. Thank you.